with these struggles that we're having here in San Francisco with population overgrowth. The ecology of Golden Gate Park can serve like a microcosm for greater San Francisco. My name is Jane Kim and I am an artist and science illustrator and I am exploring the ecology of Golden Gate Park. The role of the artist for me is once I've gotten people's attention visually or emotionally, then that aspect of me that is the science illustrator hopes to communicate um, information in a way that can help people form their perceptions and their opinions and public opinion is what guided so much of the creation of Golden Gate Park. When I first started walking around, I wasn't aware of how much of it was manufactured. There's very little of it that is actually native to San Francisco. This is uh, the historic nursery that has provided plants for Golden Gate Park and for all our parks for over 100 years. Wow. Um, it played a really instrumental role in the building of the park. The original landscape would have been a coastal scrub sand dune ecosystem. Rabbits were a very common animal. An engineer, William Hammond Hall, the visionary for the park, he set off to work and some of the first trees that he started with were blue gum eucalyptus, Monterey pine and Monterey cypress, and really just completely changed the existing landscape, almost overnight in evolutionary standards. We brought in all kinds of exotic animals, caribou, peacocks, I mean, whatever we thought floated our fancy. And we still have bison here in the park. And I joke about how even the squirrels are New Yorkers because they're East Coast squirrels and that practice of import-export is centuries old by people certainly. But more slowly there would have been some of that naturally with birds carrying that seed or in scat. But we've just done it really rapidly. So I'm also mapping the origins of the more common plants that you see walking around the park, as well as the people that come to visit the De Young. We are up here on top of Strawberry Hill in a coast live oak, one of the native trees of San Francisco. And incidentally, you know, we're, we're actually around not just these native trees, but a lot of native plants. I really admire the people who want to preserve the native plants, the native animals, the species that make San Francisco unique. But Golden Gate Park is a recreation area, not a state park or a wildlife reserve. So the human impact and activity makes these conservation decisions really challenging. An interesting example is a story about the California quail and the Himalayan blackberry bush, a non-native plant that at one point became too unmanageable for things being able to grow around it and there were crimes being committed in these bushes. So they removed as much as they could, but found out in hindsight, the California quail was using the blackberry bush to make their nests, to hide from predators. And now we have precisely one California quail left in Golden Gate Park. And so it's about understanding these interplays so that we don't drive those things that make San Francisco unique into extinction. These pieces that I've created, I hope remind people that we can guide the trajectory of the park. 
because decisions we continue to make, they're gonna shape Golden Gate for the next 100 years.